What's something that a dead person said that will always stick with you? From a late grandparent my biggest regret won't be yours. I always took it that I'll live a life that he never got to live. But now I just take it as I'll have different regrets when I'm old. It's alright. Show me a person with no regrets and I'll show you a person with no imagination. Time flows in one direction and we all have choices to make. My last phone conversation with my dad. He had Alzheimer's. And it was a largely incoherent conversation with random unconnected phrases and sounds. I felt strongly that he knew who I was, though. At one point he said, unusually clearly, don't worry, I'll catch you. I paused, confused, and said awkwardly, I thank you. He replied you're welcome. It was the last time I spoke to him before he died, and I feel like dad is still my protector. Not something he said. But my dad smiled when I read him one of my poorly written short stories just before he died. He looked so proud and content at hearing me read to him. Mine is similar. Just before my husband was intubated he couldn't speak. But he pointed at me and looked to my mother who told him she would look after me. He was sedated and never woke up again. He died less than 48 hours later. He was 51 and died from swine flu caused pneumonia. I was 32 and suddenly a widow 2 days after Christmas 2009. Any day is a good day if you're above ground. That was my co-worker on a Wednesday. That Friday morning he died of an aneurysm getting ready for work. This hurts my heart. I dread the day that I can viscerally relate to such sudden loss. Because right now I can only sympathize. May he rest in peace. It was my uncle. Last thing he ever said to me was, I'm happy for you. I hope I can meet. Name removed for privacy. Next time. It was a really rough time. The girl in question had just broken up with me three days prior so I was heartbroken the entire time but hiding it for the sake of not ruining the family reunion. My uncle was a severe alcoholic and drunk pretty much constantly. I guess soon after I left the visit he was evicted from his home and everyone lost contact with him. They found his body in the woods early December of 2019 surrounded by empty bottles of vodka. He had been dead a few months at least according to coroner's report. COD was asphyxiation due to alcohol poisoning. Sorry for your loss. I found her agenda with her elegant handwriting a few weeks after she died. As her illness progressed the writing got messier. But her last entry was Bimapi I men or in Odawa until we meet again take care. Beautiful. About 2 weeks before one of my grandfathers died I was uncomfortable talking to him cause he was so sick and I sensed what was happening. He says you think it's fun dying? True though. My grandfather told me I should marry my gf the day he died. We have now been married nearly 4 years. I think we would have got married anyway but it certainly concentrated the mind a little bit. A relative of mine died. I didn't know him but I did know their daughter who was around 15 at the time. She told me that he had told her see you tonight before going to work. He died in an accident that evening. Just made me realize how much we take life for granted. I've made a point of always going and saying bye to my dad before he leaves for work. He works on the motorway and has had some close calls with people hitting him. You never know what can happen. My dad told me, right before he died, that I no longer had to fear death. Because when the time came he would be right there waiting for me. Whoa. Out of all of the comments on here. This one legit made me choke up. He was always thinking of you and you feeling safe. Right to the end. People being that selfless and brave at death's door says a lot. My grandfather admonished me once. Telling me you don't need to understand someone to love them. You just need to love them. It stuck with me my entire life. My mother was telling me her parents didn't understand her and I repeated her father's words back to her. And she stopped. Her entire heart broke open. Her eyes filled with tears and she thanked me. It was exactly, she told me, the sort of thing her father would have said but apparently never said to her. Except right then through me, a decade later after his death. One of these days, I'm going to sort out how to do a tattoo of those words and get them inked into my skin. They are that important. My grandpa is in palliative care right now and I this is the kind of thing he tells me. This made me tear up. How beautiful. Thank you for sharing. It's going to be fine. I'll be back. Alright. Double quote. From my mom. Back in 2018. 
felt horrible pain at the time. My dad and her had to take a taxi to go to the hospital and I had to stay home with my uncle. It was about 10 11 pm when this happened. Apparently something happened to her body or something. I apologize if this sounds vorge. I don't remember much since I only visited her once a few days later. She was comatose when I saw her. One thing I do remember though was that blood got in parts of her brain that weren't supposed to be there. She passed away in November a few weeks later, before her birthday. I still miss her. I was about 10 11, and I still cry about it. I'm so sorry. It's never easy but that age it is particularly painful. Great Uncle Howard. Context World War 2 combat vet. On his deathbed. To a young 21 years old me. You did good. Kid. You did your army time and didn't have to go nowhere. Now put the booze down and get your head out of your butt. He died about 4 hours later. I got sober within 4 months of that day, and I thank Uncle Howard for his rough words. My dad had already been dead for a few years by this time so I think he knew I needed to hear it from somebody I respected. Congratulations dude mad respect. My dad was a SWAT team police officer, and had a, mostly friendly rivalry with firefighters. He thought they had a tendency to show up in large numbers to non-fire emergencies. Clutter things up with excessive equipment and make a bigger deal than necessary, especially if press was there. He died in 2018, suffering from dementia. We knew the end was coming. In his final days, he was mostly in a confused haze, but my mom and siblings took turns sitting by his bed holding his hand. He liked to hold his police department pin in his hand, as well as his wedding ring. At one moment, my sister and I were with him and he kind of sat up. For a moment, the hay seemed to lift, a lucid expression came over his face, and he said to us, clear as a bell, you know, those firefighters are really dopey, it might have been the last lucid statement of his life, I think he'd be okay with that, he was kind of a comedian. That last sentence was beautiful, have a wonderful day. You've been good all day and now you've completely ruined it by shuffling your feet. My grandfather while waking me back to my parents house when I was around 9. My grandma died a few years back. Before she passed, she woke up briefly and said I have to pee. That's it. After 86 years those were her last words. Awfully fitting. Since the woman always had to pee. That day I learned that last words aren't always as profound as Hollywood makes them out to be. But hearing her last words sure made us all smile during a time of loss. I just want to say that I found this at just the right time in the thread. A little light heartedness and odd wholesomeness. She sounds like she was a funny gal. My father in law said in September of 2018 that the St. Louis Blues would win the Stanley Cup when he was dead and gone. He passed away on the 9th of January 2019. The St. Louis Blues were the 2019 Stanley Cup champions. Sharks fan. Sad we lost to you in the WCF. Glad you beat Boston. This makes it a little better. My grandmother, who lived in a different state, was in the hospital and expected to be released soon. I flew there with the intent of helping her out for a few days once she was released. She wasn't expecting me and, when I walked into her hotel hospital room, she said, Oh my goodness, what are you doing here? Am I dying? Ten minutes later she went into cardiac arrest, and died later that evening. That's a crappy plot twist, F. I will give you my father's last words he said to me stay in the truck with your brother and sister I don't need help with this buddy. A minute later a drunk driver struck him off the road at a 112 km it did not kill him right away no he fought to live 20 more mins with a body pretty much destroyed just like that gone. Drunk driving should carry a massive sentence emo. I only met my maternal grandfather once and it was because he'd had a few strokes and was on the way out. He was kept away from the family for good reason. I'm told he was a mean boozer in my 20s. When I met him I was about 10 he could barely talk, but he did say I want to tell you. Then groaned and kind of couldn't pick up where he left off. He wasn't coming around so everyone wanted to leave. I wanted to know what he wanted to tell me but everyone said he was too tired to have visitors anymore. He passed away not long after and I doubt he was going to change my life with his words. But I'll never know the one thing he wanted to tell me the only time I ever met him. That's almost badass. Right before my dad slipped into a coma and passed away, I told him I loved him. 
He replied I love you too, baby. I will always carry that. Conversely, when my mother had a semi-lucid moment before she slipped into a coma, my younger sister said that she loved her and my mother said I love you. I just had to jump on the bandwagon and asked my mom if she loved me too. Mom looked at me for a moment and said number. Couldn't help but laugh. D. As bad as the situation is, at least she went out with a sense of humor. We could have died just now. My friend Jason a few months before he killed himself. To add context, our lives weren't in danger. We were driving and what seemed like thousands of blackbirds took flight at once, obscuring everything in front of us for a split second. The way he said it sounded as if he meant this would have been a perfect time to die. My grandpa. No no. Bunnies don't make sounds. Bunnies do this, as he proceeds to do the moving with his nose like a bunny does. Bunnies can make sound. It's just that you never, ever want to hear that sound if you can help it. A lot of these are sad, so I'm going to share one that, while still about death, makes me smile. I was 7 years old and at my great grandmother's wake. All the drunk old men in matching black suits bellowing in my grandma's front room scared me and I hid behind my great grandmother's favorite chair. My grandma came and brought me back into the kitchen and sat me down with a pickle and a tiny thimble of sherry to calm my nerves. I felt so grown up. She was a very matter of fact lady and I asked her questions about death. And despite it being her own mother who had died, she sat with me and answered honestly and calmly. Then I asked her grandma. When will you die and without blinking she said 91, like my mum, 91 and you're done and she laughed her ratty smoker's laugh and I just nodded, but grandma, what if you live longer than great grandma and she just laughed again and said then it's 92 and you're through she always talked candidly about death and had a wicked sense of humor, but it shone through even after her mother died, I forgot all about this memory until she died, it made me smile though, because she was 92, stubborn old girl, she probably decided there and then that she had to outdo her own mum. My grandma was a character and I love her. Giving a little kid a pickle and a thimble of sherry in such a bad but grandma thing to do. My grandfather's last advice to me. I regret not taking advantage of all the opportunities offered to me. I've traveled around the world and been elected to public office because I learned to say yes. Pretty sure he means he regrets not fricking that chick in college with the huge T who always played ping pong with him. That's mine at least. My grandma in January 2017. I'd just gotten engaged in the October 2016 but hadn't had chance to see her until the January. Went to visit as she wasn't well, as always. She sees me, her face lights up and she said oh Jaxalamp. Your mum and your aunt have been helping me to pick out an outfit for your wedding. I can't wait to see one of my grandchildren get married she looked genuinely happy. I hadn't seen her that happy in years. I said thank you to her and then had to leave for work. Three weeks later she died after being rushed into hospital with a huge stroke. As well as numerous other health problems. I still wish she had been to my wedding to this day and miss her terribly. I feel the same with my grandmother. She was all set and packed to come to my state for my wedding. But she got deathly ill two days beforehand. She lived another six weeks but was never strong enough to travel. It broke my heart unpacking the suitcase she'd packed for my wedding. When the time came to donate her clothes. My grandmother was a very gentle and thoughtful person. She said, quoting Mark Twain. Kindness is the language the blind can see and the deaf can hear. Hey I learned that during my English class, the first time I actually smiled when learning about metaphors. Okay, I'll see you soon. My dad left when I was 2. I finally found the courage to contact him in my mid-twenties, and we planned to meet about 2 days after the phone call. He killed himself 12 hours after the phone call. Always here to talk if needed. Heavy crap might need 2 sets of muscles. My grandma, before she passed, Always told me to keep $5 in my bra in case of a bad date and I need bus money. That advice has saved me on countless dates. And the good ones win a prize for getting to second base. Stay the course my grandma after she went in for an ulcer and ended up with an infection. She went quick and unexpectedly. I was in recovery from an awful H addiction after my discharge from the military. I am very thankful she was able to see my clean for at least 2 years before her passing. Just wish she could meet my 3 year old. She would have loved him. 
I repeat it to myself when I'm having a hard time. 8 years clean this March. She would be so proud I bet. Not just about the terrific 180 but that you keep her memory every time you repeat her words in your head. That's a living memorial that you can pass along to your son. My grandpa told me like a week before he died. I've spent a lot of time in this world and the one thing I learnt is that you can never expect from others the same you expect from yourself. Abraham Lincoln folks are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. That saying has gotten me through some tough times in my life. If a dead person said anything at all to me, it wouldn't matter what it was they said, it would stick with me regardless. Get lost. The last words my mom mouthed to me from her deathbed. That was the last day she was conscious enough to respond to any of us before dying. Our relationship at that point was pretty garbage, so not the most surprising thing to come out of her mouth to me that month. I told you not to let your grandma in the kitchen. Grandma is a notoriously terrible cook. My papa was in the hospital being treated for cancer over Thanksgiving and I let grandma help me make the pumpkin pie, which she left the sugar out of. When I explained why I hadn't brought him pie, that was papa's response. His third battle with cancer finally took him away just before this last Christmas. He always had a great sense of humor and never missed an opportunity to tease us. I like to remember that when I think of him. This made me smile. When I was about 12 and dealing with strong suicidal ideations, my father told me that the universe was too expansive and time too endless for me to be on this tiny planet in this exact time. So why would I throw everything away when the odds are so slim that it might just have meaning? It really stuck with me, and helped shape some fundamental philosophies that continue to keep me from killing myself to this day. My dad died almost 10 years ago, when I was 18. A bad day of work is better than a good day of unemployment. One of the last things my uncle said to me before he passed, I was telling about my horrible day at work and he made me feel better. Well that's just a matter of opinion. I've had lots of bad days at work that I prefer unemployment too. My grandfather's last words to me were don't take any wooden nickels. With a smile and wink. We were very close. I spread this advice on the daily to everyone I can. My auntie's mum passed away recently. Her last words were I'm off to have afternoon tea with my mother and sisters. They all passed away years ago. My 8th grade English teacher told me, you have the handwriting of a serial killer. She died a few months later. Every time I write something down with my terrible handwriting I think about her saying that to me. My best friends. 16M. Mother had been put into hospice from battling bone cancer and the funeral director was there and was asking her questions. What do you want your family to remember the most about you? I make the best meatballs. She passed in September of last year. Rest in peace. Thanks for reading. My granddad used to say it's better to be late in this world than early in the next. I think of it a lot when I'm driving. I will no doubt quote it to any future offspring. My older cousin finally settled down and got married 45 a few years ago we're pretty far apart in age since he's my dad's first cousin. I was 17 at the time of his wedding. I was running around during his reception getting things for people because apparently I was the designated maid for the old people there. I was exhausted and miserable the entire time and my cousin noticed me and pulled me up on the dance floor to dance. I still remember him saying, you're too young to be stuck around these old folks. You need to go out and have fun while you still can. You need to have fun. A year later, he died a few days before his one year anniversary in a car crash. Since then, I've taken what he said to heart and I've made a lot of trips with friends, enjoyed bonfires, gone to parties and conventions and just been having fun. I'll never forget that. Miss you, Stony. Didn't say per se, was on heavy oxygen with a mask and had just gotten an intubation tube out, but my mom said, mouthed, the same poem that we always said to each other when I was going to bed I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby mommy you'll be, it is a saying from the book, love you forever by Robert Munch, that was almost 22 years ago, I was 11 at the time. And I can still see her mouthing that to me as we were saying our final goodbyes to her super vividly.
Oh that book. The first time I ever heard of it was at a baby shower when I was 18 and it just hit me like a train and I was bawling my eyes out in front of all these ladies I didn't know. 10 years later my mom has been diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and I read her that book with tears in my eyes all the time. I'm sorry for your loss. Pride will cometh before the fall. My mom was an alcoholic and couldn't talk about her issue with alcohol. I was 10 when they put her in the ground. 60 years later I cannot handle this freaking crap. All I see is horror and hear the screams. It's the frick, freaking freaking frick. My late grand fater in the 90s when we traveled to see the old battlegrounds of the Winter War and Continuation War in Karelianismus. He was the most mild mouthed and well spoken person. But he couldn't do that trip without being absolutely s faced most of the time and weeping a lot. Which I never had seen him do before. Not even in his wife's funeral. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.